So today's video, um, in our series on geometry, we're going to look at some of the terms that we use in maths so that uh, if I start using some vocabulary down the road, uh, you can follow along with what they mean. Our first one is about points. Points are precise locations on a diagram, a geometry-based problem, and um, they are shown as usually as dots, um, and we give them labels. And we label them usually with the first uh, bit of the alphabet, um, and we always make sure that they are capital letters. A line is a geometric object that uh, extends forever in a straight path, and it's infinitely thin, so it has no thickness to it at all. So in the illustration I just have on screen now, um, I've drawn the line DE, or I could reverse the letter um, sequence, so I could say uh, the line ED, and that's still the same thing because it, it's symmetrical. So if I was to write this, I would say the line DE, or the line ED, which is the same thing. I can even shorten it once more just using symbols. So the symbol for a line, which you can see right now, it has little arrowheads on the ends. It's just the points with a little line on top with the arrowheads on either end. A segment is part of a line. So, it's, so if you can imagine the line when it extended forever in both directions, that's why we have the two arrowheads on the ends. Uh, imagine a segment is only a certain portion of it. So it starts here and it ends here. So we have to sort of lay down the boundary and we lay those boundaries by points. So again, we're gonna have something that looks quite straight, infinitely thin, but it's bounded by two points, a start and an end point. So because it's a portion of a line, it has the start and end, but it also has a length to it, a defined length. So I could put a ruler on here and find out how long that one is, but that's I'm not gonna go ahead and measure it with a ruler right now, but you can imagine that you could. So how would I call out this object? Uh, well, I could call this the line segment FG. So I could write line segment FG, just like I did with the line, uh, the previous one up here, or I could shorten that. So I'm gonna go with the shortening version on, from now on with these geometry terms. Uh, I can write the letters FG, and if I wanna use the icon for a segment, it's actually just a straight line with no arrow heads on it. This object here is symmetrical, so I could label it uh, with the letters back to front and it'll still be the same thing. A ray is like a hybrid between the line which extends forever in both directions and segments which uh, it doesn't extend at all. Um, so with a ray, you can imagine it starts from a defined point and then it extends forever from there, usually running through another point. We use two points to label the, uh, this object because we need to know which, which way this ray is facing. So if you have a starting point and extends from there, which way? Well, it goes that way through that other point. So you can see in the diagram over here, uh, we start from the point H and we run through the point I and extend forever in that direction. Uh, when we label this one, we have to be very careful with the sequence that we mention the letters, the points. We have to start from the starting point, the origin, the fixed location. So we in this occasion, it starts from here. So when I label this, the ray, I have to mention the starting point first and then the second one. I can't reverse the order, it, it won't make sense. So I would call this the ray from point H through point I and the icon I'm going to use this time is a line with an arrowhead um, indicating that it's going towards point I. An intersection point is when uh, two lines, they could be segment, uh, segmented lines as well, or perhaps curves, it's when two lines meet together or, or, or cross over one another. So if I've got a segment from here to here and I've got a segment from here to here, then my intersection point would be this point here in the middle, which I'm gonna give a label. So let's pick the letter, I don't know, J. You would say that the point J is the intersection point of those two line segments that I've drawn around it. Our next one is plane. A plane is a flat surface. Um, so you can imagine it's two dimensional and it has zero thickness and it basically extends forever um, in a two-dimensional um, area. So usually like the floor you would refer to as a plane, a ceiling is a different plane, this wall here would be a different plane as well, so these are all flat surfaces. We show this um, on our diagrams by drawing uh, usually a rectangle tilted to one side with uh, dotted arrows pointing in those two dimensions. 
And, and there we go, there's our diagram for the plane. Let's move on to our next one. So we're actually going to move up to some terms here that refers to a collection of objects. Um, so here we've got collinear. If we break the meaning of the word into two parts, we can see it's got the first, the prefix, the start of the word is co. Co means together. And the last part of its name, linear, means a straight line. So together in a straight line. That should give you the meaning of this word. Collinear is usually referring to points, points that are all lying on the same straight line. So I'll quickly draw a picture of that. Um, we can say the points K, L and M are all collinear. Let's move to our next one, which is concurrent. Concurrent means these lines all meet at the same location. Um, so there could be lines, there could be segments, they could be uh, even curves. But what matters is that they all have a, a common meeting point in the middle somewhere. We would say that all of those lines as a collective are concurrent. So there I've just drawn a bunch of segments uh, and they all meet at that one location. Let's move on to perhaps the most important one of all of this list because that's part of the name of this channel, Angles and Acid. Let's talk about angles. A angle is a geometric object that is formed between two lines that are stemming from the same point. We would refer to them as legs. We very rarely have I seen that in actual use, but just so you know, we have a common point and we've got two lines radiating from it. I guess at this point we could call them rays because I can make them extend forever in that direction and forever in the other direction through another point. And that area there would be the angle. Sometimes when you're working with angles, you'll actually be given a label already on the diagram. Usually the letters that we use on the angle are Greek letters. So that'll be labels like theta, alpha, beta, gamma, and so forth. These are all Greek letters of the alphabet. However, you may not have a, a Greek letter assigned already on the picture, and you might need to refer to this particular angle I've drawn uh, some other way. So we can write this as the angle, and I'm gonna to refer to it by the points that are around this uh, shape. So let me just put some names on the other two points. To label this angle, let's say I'm trying to write a proof, I would have to refer to the angle by the points that, that form the angle itself. So we start from the angle formed by the point O through to the point N, and then to the next point P. So the order that I mention these letters is actually quite important. It tells me uh, which it tells me where the uh, where the center the, the the center vertex actually is. It's the middle letter in our sequence here. The angle O N P. I could reverse the order of those letters, and it still would make sense. So the angle formed by the points P to M to O, and that's still uh, acceptable. Now, what's common to both? is that where the vertex is, that common point between those two arms or legs of that, of that shape, that common uh, point is always in the middle uh, of our written um, description of this, of this uh, angle. There is an icon for angles, and I'll show you to you now. It's actually one of these little signs. So we can rewrite that one as the angle PNO, and that's also fine. Uh, so just so you know that we have uh, those options to refer to an angle. Let's uh, put these ideas, these terms all together. We're going to throw it through a, a diagram that's got a little, little bit more complexity to it and see if we can pick out some of the terms that we've learned about in this video. 